Hi everyone! So the hour of code is upon us. Um, the first week of December is computer science week and that is when we get students learning about coding in the hour of code. Uh, it's a time for students to learn any type of coding and there's so many fun activities. You can check out the link in the description to some of the best hour of code activities that are available online. I want to just walk you through today some of my most popular unplugged coding activities that are so easy to do, very low prep, and can teach your kids some of these basic coding concepts um, that are included here in this worksheet. I will also link to my Hour of Code worksheets. These are printable worksheets that you can give to your students or kids at home to learn about these concepts as an at home or at school sort of quiet activity. But let's talk a little bit before before I show you the unplugged activities about these concepts so that we can review what they mean. So the first concept that's important for coding is an algorithm. An algorithm is a set of instructions given to a computer to complete uh, a task. You can think of an algorithm like a recipe. You know, when we bake a cake, it's really important that we give the right instructions and follow the exact recipe. Otherwise, our cake's not going to turn out very well. Uh, sequence is a, another important coding concept. Sequence refers to the order that we do the steps in. If we go back to our baking a cake example, if we were to put all of our ingredients into the oven and bake them before we even mix them together, that wouldn't turn out well. We have to do things in the correct order in order for our uh, instructions to turn out properly. Branching is making a choice based on a condition. So a good example of that would be if we look outside and we see that it's raining, then we're gonna choose to get our umbrella. If we look outside and see that it's hot and sunny, we're gonna to choose to get our hat or our sunglasses or our sunscreen. So branching refers to making a choice based on a condition. Loops are instructions that repeat and repeat. I'll show you how we use loops in some of our activities to make our code more efficient. So we don't have to tell our computer, turn left, turn left, turn left, turn left. We can just say, turn left three times and it makes it a lot more efficient and uh, easier for our computer to understand. Debugging is something that all little coders need to know about, which is fixing our mistakes in our code. So if during any of these activities or any of the coding tasks that you're doing for Hour of Code, your students are struggling and they're making mistakes, that's all part of the learning experience with coding. And they need to become excellent debuggers in order to succeed with their coding tasks. Then we have variables. Variables are like little containers that hold information. They can hold text, they can hold numbers, they can hold all sorts of things. We can sometimes think of variables like a scoreboard for a sports team holding the score of each team. Um, variables are important for identifying parts of our code. Lastly, we have decomposition. Decomposition refers to breaking down a big problem into smaller steps. We need to do that all the time when we're learning, and we'll show you how we can do that with some of the algorithms we're gonna build in these unplugged coding activities. So I hope that these unplugged activities are useful for you, and I hope that you all have a great Hour of Code week this year. All right, so I just wanted to show you a super simple Hour of Code activity that you can do in your classroom. It's super easy, it's low prep, and I'll show you how to get started with it. So I'm just using these carpet tiles, I'll link to them, but you can also use painter's tape if you want. Set them up in a grid. In your classroom, you'll spread them out more. We didn't have enough kids, so we used stuffies as uh, the kids, but what you would do is you would set kids up on each one of these um, dots and have them be the obstacles. So the idea here is that we are going to program our robot. We have our robot volunteer here, and he is going to be programmed to the orange balloon. And so our programmer over here has already developed the code. Again, this is um, linked in my website, these arrows, but you can obviously just make them yourself as well too. Uh, and so let's try out the code and see if it works. So the code that we have here says move left one and then move forward one and then move forward one 
and then move left one, and then move forward one, and again move forward. And so we've made it to the orange balloon, and so that's basically how it works. You can make it more complex with more obstacles or more grids. Super easy way to learn about algorithms in the classroom. All right, so this is another super simple unplugged coding activity that you can do low prep, really easy. This is learn to code with a deck of cards. So what you do is you just set up a seven by seven grid of your cards, lay them out. You can put painter's tape under the cards to keep them in the grid, but I don't even have that. I've got them set up on a bed here just for demonstration purposes, but of course you can put it on a floor, carpet, table, wherever you have the space. And what we are going to do in this unplugged activity is design an algorithm to get our Lego minifigure from the start to the finish. But of course, we've got some obstacles in the way. We put some Lego pieces. You can use absolutely anything to make your obstacles. You can use bunched up pieces of paper. You can lose little toys, whatever it be. I've got these start and finish cards, and I've got these algorithm cards, and these are all available in, as part of my printable, which I will link in the description, but of course you can make them yourself as well. So we've already designed our algorithm here, and now my helper is going to see whether our algorithm works. So let's try it out. So we're gonna go up one, then we're gonna go left one, then we're gonna go left again one, left again one, then we're gonna go up one, we're gonna go up one, up one, up one, up one, and left one. And there we go, we made it to the finish. Now, what if we wanted to make this code more efficient, right? So we can actually learn about some even more, um, more advanced uh, coding concepts if we want. We could try to add a loop to our coding algorithm here. So we've got three left arrows here. Instead of putting all three left arrows, we could simply put one left arrow, but make a note that we're gonna repeat this loop three times, right? So there are things you can do to actually make this a little bit more complex. As part of my printable, I have some uh, challenge print some uh, challenge papers that kids can do where they can design their own algorithms and write down some common everyday algorithms and then include some answers. So lots to do with this super easy unplugged activity.